In this tutorial, we're going to look at creating contours, slope maps, aspect, and hill shades using a digital elevation model or a DEM. Here we have a DEM file for the entire state of Mississippi. It was downloaded from the Maris website under data, elevation, topographic tab, and then the statewide DEM file. It's a pretty large file. It's going to take a decent amount of time to download, but it gives us a good base for what we're going to work on. Now we're only going to work on one particular county, and instead of running all of those commands for contours and aspect and so on, for the entire state, what we're going to do is extract out just the county that we're going to be working with. And to do that, we need to first bring in our county boundary. So we're going to add in that county right here. We'll add in that shape. We'll zoom in a little closer to it. What we're going to do is we're going to extract that out using a spatial analyst tool called Extract by Mask. Now, the first before we use that, we're going to need to go to Customize Extension and check on all our extensions, make sure those are working. Open up the Arc Toolbox right here. We're going to go to Spatial Analyst, Extraction, and Extract by Mask. Extract by Mask allows us to use a vector to clip uh, and extract a raster image. In this case, the raster is the DEM file. The first input needs to be that raster, so we're going to choose the statewide DEM. The feature mask needs to be the county right here. Now it's going to put it in my default geo database, and for this exercise, I'm going to leave it there. But if you needed to put it in a database where maybe specific to a project, you would click on this folder, create a new file geo database, and to store that in there. In this case, I'm just going to keep it as the default and click OK. Now, depending on the speed of your computer and the size of the file, this might take a little bit of time. You can notice that as I hollow out the county boundary and I turn off the statewide file, that I've extracted just the DEM file for my subject county right here. Now, the first of several tasks that I'm going to do is to create contours from this, and it's going to interpolate based on the size and resolution of the pixel. And so while you can choose different contour intervals, like one foot or two foot or five foot, are you going to get the same resolution for that? It's important to know because sometimes it's better to do uh, a two foot or five foot interval even though you have the ability to do one foot because it's not any more accurate. To find these tools, we're going to go to, again, under Spatial Analyst Tools, to Surface, and we're going to click on Contour. It's going to ask us for our input raster, and instead of choosing the statewide, we're going to use our county DEM file right here. It's going to also put these output polyline features. In this case, it's going to be a shape file with lines on them that are the contours. It's going to put those also in the default geo database. And again, if you were putting this on uh, for a project geo, geo database, you would click this folder, navigate to where you want to save that. For this exercise, we're going to keep it where it is. Let's set the contour interval to 2, and we'll say OK. Now, two foot contours for an entire county still takes a considerable amount of time, but far less than it would if we were to do the entire state. In fact, if you knew that you were going to work in a particular municipality, you might even trim by that municipal boundary. At this point, we're going to turn off the DEM. We're going to zoom into just a portion of the county and look at a few of these contours here. We want to label these, and it's important to open up the attribute table to see that uh, the contours are labeled at two foot intervals, 176, 180, 182, uh, basically even numbers, and it's labeled through the contour column right here. So if we wanted to, we could right click and go to properties, go to the labels tab up top, check the box label features, we want to check the field as contour right here. I'm going to choose aerial narrow, and we're going to Go to the symbol right here. I'm going to click Edit Symbol. I'm going to go to Mask and actually put a halo on this. I tend to do 1.5 as my size for that halo. As for placement properties, we have the option by default to do it above the line, but for contours, it makes sense a lot of times to do it on the line. We'll say OK, and we'll say OK. You'll see here we're starting to see the contour labels show up even though all the contours are still solid lines. We could go a step for further by going to Properties, going to Symbology, Categories. We'll add in the contours and say Add All Values. And then we can do a color ramp for those. We'll click off of this and back onto this green to red color ramp. We'll say OK. Because we're zoomed into a very particular area, we don't see that as much. But if I zoom out, 
you can start to see that color ramp up here. Now contour is just one of several spatial analyst tools that we can run on surfaces like DEMs. I'm going to turn this off. I'll collapse this down. We're going to zoom back out and zoom back into our county right here. I'm going to turn on the DEM and run an aspect tool. So we're going to input the raster here, do the extraction again, and again we're going to put it in our default geo database. We'll say OK and let this command run. Now the aspect is actually going to tell us the orientation of in this case, the slope that we're working with. It does keep flat areas like lakes and ponds in this area, in this particular instance, as flat, but we can see north facing slopes, northeast, east, southeast, and so on, in the direction of those slopes. And this can be important for a range of planning decisions. Beyond aspect, we can turn this off. We can actually run a slope as well. We'll say input raster. We'll again choose our extracted Octib Hall County. We'll leave all of these as they are and say OK. Now as it creates this slope map, it's going to give you slope ranges from 0 to 2.8 in this instance. And what we're going to do is we can modify these different slopes by going to uh, the properties and the symbology right here. We actually go to classify. We can see how the different uh, percent slopes break down as you go from left to right. And what uh, GIS is doing by default is using what it calls natural breaks, natural areas to break the data. But for our purposes, we might want to go to a manual break right here and set our percentages ourselves. So we could say 0 to 2, 2 to 5, 5 to 10, 10 to 15, 20, and then 25, 30, might say 40, and say 60, and click OK and then apply that information. And so we get a few uh, ranges here that are a little more workable and understandable than what you would see just by default using the GIS natural breaks. Now all of the contour, slope, and aspect have practical applications for what you're going to do in GIS, but sometimes it's nice just to have a visual of the terrain. And if we zoom out here, you can see the DEM starts to give that uh, understanding of terrain, but it's a little dark, it's a little heavy, and one common one that you might see is what's called a hillshade. So we're going to click on hillshade, and the input raster, again, is going to be our extracted Octopaw County. It fills in all of this, again, sending it to the default geo database, and we're going to say OK. And what this hillshade does is it kind of gives the illusion of how the terrain would look as if there were a light shining across it and it creates these sort of highlights, in this case on uh, the northwest side, these shadows on the southeast side, and you can begin to see what the terrain would look like. This becomes a nice base uh, underneath a lot of other map data, and especially if we go into the properties here and we'll go to display and change the transparency from 0%, we might make it 40% and apply that and give sort of a lighter feel. We could even bump it up to 60 and just have this as a nice backdrop that we put uh, additional information on, especially polygons that we can turn down the transparency and still kind of get the illusion of terrain without actually having to have contours or that heavy DEM behind the file. And so these are just a few things that you can do with a DEM file in GIS to help with your mapping, whether it's creating uh, helpful data like contours that can then be exported out for base maps or just visuals like hillshade that become a nice backdrop for your maps in general.